it's another Rangers Force Day. The big day, so turned up. Emmy Ferris Groupie Top C. That's official lyrics, by the way. You're welcome. Christmas album coming out real soon. But you know what? You know what needs to happen right now? The intro. Apologies about that. Hello, everyone. This is CJ Over 992. And today we're back from a brand new video. And as you can see right on the Nasher, what I'm wearing today is what Rangers gave me. A massive, massive smile as that was a bitch, you know what I mean? You try to play coy, you try to play cautious, you try and say you're not that invested because what's coming upon the horizon and then the whistle goes, and then every ball you feel in your ticker and you go through the roller coaster that football can as that is just the epitome of supporting and loving a football club up, down, shaking it or oh, boon, I don't, in fact I don't know who's more tired, I don't know if I'm more tired, we're more tired, the Players who gave everything is mere tired, or oh, the guy who had to sit there and edit Group C every four and a half minutes is mere tired than that because it had everything. It's why we love this game, and now it's why we all love European Thursdays as Rangers and Europe provide us with another magical moment that some people say was impossible, and some people said rightly, by the way, that we wasted a golden opportunity and we threw it away and we done this, we done this with the way it happened versus Lima So, and you know, it's the most Rangers thing all time when you actually think about it, right? That we got a total of five points to go for us versus the worst team in the group by the name of Limassol and leave us feeling dejected, negative and making a task that was well within our hands seem almost impossible. But then we go ahead and take six points. We take maximum points against quite clearly the best team in the group that's cutting about where five times Champions League winner pulling the strings playing some of these best football that he's played in his career if that's not the most Rangers thing you've ever heard you can let me know what is down in the comment section below because it's not the easy way it's not the hard way it's just the Rangers way and they always keep us on our toes and you know I'm sitting here smiling and I'm, I'm trying to formulate a thought to go ahead in today's video where they start and where they go but honestly everything is completely spent in here because of the emotions of that game I was up I was doing it, it was like a yo-yo because we were in the conference league we were topping the Europa League group Sparta Prague put Lima Soul to the sword the day so we had to fight it was either first or third and a massive credit and a massive shout before we go anywhere and get lost in the one liners shout out this Rangers team because we went ahead to a stadium that just three days ago hosted a side called Real Madrid who was only able to muster despite all their money and despite all their talent one single goal as they drew one each in the exact same stadium versus the exact same team we played just a couple days ago and that there is sensational you look at Betis's run with not only the undefeated in the last 12 domestic matches but we are the first team and 90 matches to have scored more than one goal versus Real Betis. Not only is it our first time in our history, by the way, gone over to Spain and beaten a Spanish opposition, but you add in that and how they're playing recently with what we're carrying as a, fifth, eh, a football team, sorry, over 14 first team injuries. You know what I mean? If you look at your bench tonight, we had two goalies, three injured cart, cart horses that's injured every five matches, a right, left, centre-back, midfield, right wing, could the inning if you want, called Sterling, and a couple of laddies who need to go to their bed as they go to school in the morning. And you look at the start in 11, there was pegles, we're moving this, we had people that was making only their second European start by Ross McCausland. And we'll speak about that. We had a struggling striker who's trying to find his feet in a team who looked dead and buried two weeks ago, but because of the injuries, he's thrusted back in. And then you have Sam Lammers being Sam Lammers. You never know what you're going to get, but that team stuck together and fought, and it certainly wasn't pretty, but all we can ask for, because we know it's not going to be perfect, is you fight for this that's on your chest, and you give everything, and that, for me, is a total Rangers performance. It doesn't always need to be sing songs and rainbows, but if you give that, us as a fans will back you all the way, and they deserve it. I'm not taking shots at anybody that they, every single person, whether we're perfect or no, gave everything they go, and that's why we sit tight Top of the group, 3 mil banked, by the way, and we have a buy next round in terms of the Europa League. Thanks, Phil. Can you imagine when this guy starts getting some real players and game changers and he's starting to live and what he's managed to pick up from what's been left over from the Beale graveyard is... <laughs> 
absolutely sensational. And I, we all, all to fill as we're not making any of the European moves. I feel that lad eh, pulling the strings and being able to put that in. I mean, Sterling, can we talk about him really briefly? I, you know, I tweeted out at half time or just before half time. It's the perfect game for Sterling because we need some, we need defensive minded. And he's came in and he's played centre mid for only his second time in his entire career. And he's came out there against, again, the best team on paper that's littered with talent, money, and Champions League medals. But the young lad, he came out of position and gave everything in 45 minutes. And he was an epitome of eh, this Rangers team. Just heart and fight and desire. And by God, is it beautiful to see a couple days before a cup final to get a taste of that and be able to see it. As the fans, there's not a, an excuse anywhere in the book to use. Can he take that now and drop it in to the cup final? We've saw it right there. Use that and get it. And it should be a very successful weekend. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the successful Thursday. And by God, where do I start? Oh, I know where I'm going to start. Serial Dessers. Let's have a talk about it. I have took absolute poundings because of this lad. The online, in the comment section, on social media, on Instagram, you've all let me know that he's the spies and then he rate this laddie. But can I just say, we spoke about him in yesterday's preview video. We spoke about how he looked dead in Berry, but because of Danilo's injury, we need him to come out firing. His back was truly against the wall. This was a make it or break it. And for me, he's made it as he was absolutely brilliant. He left the game with a goal and an assist. And his goal, by the way, was absolutely ridiculous. R9, the R9 would be blushing as the last person to drop a couple players inside the box with a cheeky little shimmy. Like that was a Brazilian buck tooth maniac. And it was absolutely sensational to see Dezers get his moment, but take it in the right way. And it wasn't just his goal, it was his movement, it was his build up. And he really ran his race by about 64 minutes. But by God, did we need a centre forward in this game? And we got one. And he even done a knee slide. So clearly, he saw our tweets about Morelos. All I'm going to say is Dessers at 28 made me very sad but Dessers at 29 makes me very very happy and long may that continue Dessers. Go and make yourself a Rangers player son. Take what you got for this game and take it into the weekend and your Rangers career will change like that and speaking of Rangers career I think we're going to naturally talk about a couple players and then we'll get in to the game recap because the game itself if you're a neutral that that's just football at its absolute best some of the goals some of the build up it was just football again played at the highest level but before we get naturally into that I want to talk about Ross McCausland as well because it is a very very interesting 45 minutes for the young laddie who is 20 years old and I feel like this is an important lesson not only for him but us as a fan base we really like Ross right he's going to be a good player for us I'm completely um, behind all of that but there is going to be moments and I thought it took some good moments for him but also good management for Phil as well for how he handled and helped Ross McCausland because it could have been easy at half time just to pull him out of that because again defensively he was a liability. He's a 20-year-old laddie. It's going to happen. And I know some people saying, oh, CJ, you're not starting here by moaning at a 20-year-old laddie. He's just a young guy. I get all that. But see, when you wear this and you're playing in the first team, you need to be treated like a first team player. And him defensively was getting targeted all day as he's just not got that in his game just yet. He's still learning the game. They were overloading Tavernier. There was constant two-on-ones and it was their outball every day as Ross couldn't track his man and couldn't collect his man. But what I absolutely loved about Phil Clement's management is at halftime, would have been easy to rip him off. For me, Phil got it wrong versus Todd Cantwell for maybe the same things, not tracking back, not getting it wide to help his full back. I feel like he handled that wrong, in my opinion, and he's tried to set that right. And for me, he did that with Ross as he actually brought in some help in terms of Sterling. Tidied, tidied up in the right-hand side and allowed the young laddie to leave the game with his head held high. No slinking off at half time so aye it was a mixed day in and itself but if you watch the actual game recap you'll hear Rossi's name a lot more for positive than negative but again I just wanted to talk about all of that troops because it's again just setting us on the right way the young laddie isn't he perfect but the way he responded and played in the second half and adjusted to what Phil done is what we want to see and again as a manager making the big decisions and the right decisions this time in my opinion leaves me a happy guy Seema lads Seema 
is not only is this guy basically scoring a goal every two games for Rangers and carrying us offensively in games of football when other people have been struggling, but it's the work rate, it's the effort, it's the tracking back, it's the defending. The guy is everywhere and for me on the biggest stage. Once again, he just shows his utter class in. That free mil, I wouldn't even let that touch the old bank account. I'd be sending that down to Brighton the night and just saying that's a wee down payment. We'll be back after we lift the European trophy. I've got to be honest, was that a statement I thought I'd be saying after we got scanted by the worst team that I've seen in Europe for a long time? Nah, no, it isn't the troops, but that's how quickly football can change and that's what Rangers can date you. But aye, let's get into the game recap because you're going to be hearing everybody's name you want to actually hear because the start of the game was actually pretty positive for me in terms of the first 10 minutes or so. I thought, right, we're really in the game here and we obviously took the lead after a great bit of invention from our boy um, Dessers originally to get the heater. Eventually Eventually goes back to the goalie, he tries to kick away, Tavernier pushing up down the right hand side, plays it to young Ross McCausland making his second start in European football for Rangers, direct, positive, brave, running at his man, finds the uh, big Dessers who's yes, first touch isn't he great, yes, it's a little bit clumsy, but that is what you get with him, you know what I mean? He's like the Tin Man, if you get that reference. That's a wee shout-out to some of the elder lads that's currently watching today's video. These feet are a bit clumsy, but he ends up getting the ball down, flicking it to Seema, and Seema scores the goal that he scored versus St Mirren, but this time in the brightest light so far of his young career as he slaps it into the back and it's a perfect start for Rangers. I'm saying this is all just amazing. They've scored already. And what's frustrating about this game, and if you watched it, you'll know what I'm talking about here, as good as Betis was, and truly some of the football, I mean, some of the carving open they did and the crosses they put to the back post is usually what we do in Scottish football when we're infuriated that we're having a goat tappings. They carved us open so many times. They've got so many talented players. But if you watch that game, you'll know the goals came directly from us being not only defensively a shambles, but us giving them the ball is, the ball ends up going to Tavernier and he probably should just rattle this out the park if I'm being brutally honest, but he tries to play in Ross who's coat on his heels, they do a nice little one-two, Golton nowhere near good enough here as he tries to step too late to his man, Ross leaves his man running through free and Miranda slaps it into the back of net with a great finish, it's a learning lesson for a 20 year old kid making his name in the game that you've got to track your man and they exploited that all afternoon. So that was the 15th minute and then the 16th, 17th and 18th minute happened and I thought, oh no, I'm not surviving this game. This is going to be the game that finishes me because see, uh, Sam Lammers has the perfect opportunity to make a simple pass as we've got an overload in the middle of the park but he ends up passing it directly to a Real Betis player. They run through it and they really should score but it's ended up being deflected brilliantly for Ben Davies who done his Ben Davies thing again. Strolls through a game. Looks perfect, you see, there's the defender, and then he just has a massive brain fart, and I will get to it in a couple minutes, because instead I need to talk about Real Betis rattling the bar with one of the best shots I've seen in a while, and I'm pretty sure Jack Butlin got a fingertip save to this, somebody can correct me in the lot, does he, does he flick that on the bar for a big, uh, the Mexican centre mid, Guardiola or something like that his name is, I don't know if I just called him Pep or no, my head's dizzy, I'm sir, but I'm pretty sure big handsome Jack clips that onto the bar, and... Aye, I can't breathe at this point. And then I've nearly fell. You know what I mean? This is the... I'm needing to stand up for this, you know? Move the squeaky cherry destiny because I need to talk to you like this, troops, right? Because we throw the ball. Not only do we actually throw it to one of our players for once, which normally doesn't happen if you watch Rangers games, but we throw it to Big Des who hits a heater. It goes to Jose. Jose hits a wonderful through ball. Troops, I'm saying, Des has got this here. What's Dester's going to do? He could do anything. He could fall over. He could shoot. He could fake to shoot and fall over. We've seen it all just in the last week in itself. But he runs, right? He, oh, that was my Achilles. Oh, I'm nearly done there. He nearly done, but we'll carry on. One take. One take, CJ. Let's go. He's running. He fakes. He cuts inside the defender. Look like me there. Just collapsing on the deck. Big Des turns it like he's Johnny Wilkinson. He runs around the ball. And then he just pegs the keeper, and not in a way that's going to get me demonetised, I'm talking about putting the ball in between the legs, troops, it's composed, it's skillful, R9 is blushing, and it is, Surrey Odessers, just need to bring the chair back, it's a little bit awkward, but I'm going to carry on with the video, troops, and you know, I've took a lot of flack for Big Des, um, and I do say there is something in the laddie, if he straights the life out of you, but the moments there, 
is going to happen when you've got a player of Dezer's ability because believe it or not, he has. Go, Sohan, be patient, get behind the laddie, whether you like him or no. We have him at least until January with the games that we need for to get us to January before we can bring in whoever you want, whatever striker you want. Dessers will be leading the line. He needs us to get behind him. He showed glimpses the day of what he's capable of and when we needed a player to step up and be counted, a goal and an assist to his name. And a cheeky wee knee slide on a Thursday as well. We appreciate it, Dezers and I. Keep it up, please. So all the comments I've been getting flung my way constantly can actually be deleted and hopefully turned around. <sighs> I'm blowing here, troops. I need a drink, man. We better a cheeky sponsor break. We can't use the music, though. But aye, blowing 2-1 up. Things are cruising. We're loving life. And aye, they scored and ruined it again. And the way they scored it is infuriating, right? Because the boss coming down... It's coming down with snow on it. First of all, Dessers get took to the cleaners and the referee should stop this, but he plays advantage. O only we can get played advantage and we concede for the advantage. You know what I mean? I'll leave it for a couple minutes. We end up getting the ball kicked up in the air. It's coming down with snow on it. You think D uh, Big Ben Davies can heater that away, can maybe let it drop first, then take it, bring it down in the chesticle and show a wee bit of composure like it does. Try today, right? So he brings it down on the chest, but then it's a heavy touch. And then he tries to like cuddle the, the big uh, Borgia centre forward for Real Betis instead of just nailing him, pulling him to the deck and stopping the game right then and there. And then Isco, you can't give five times Champions League winners chances to constantly run it in. He just takes Goldson for a walk. And you know what? I'm not even going to be too critical on Goldson. I have been critical a lot recently for some of the goals he's gave away. But it's Isco. Sometimes you hold your hand up and say, that boy's just got the football on a string. And that's football at the highest level. We didn't get to see it a lot at that level. But to watch that laddie just run about, he's going to have moments. You just, it is what it is, right? And he just passes it straight to, I believe, Perez, who used to play for Leicester. I believe in Newcastle, if I'm 100% right in that. And he curls it beautifully by Butland. Now, where I've got frustrations, right, is Ben Davies. And rightly so, Ben Davies is getting killed online for this. But the rest of the game, he's perfect. But that's Ben Davies. Great, and then just gives a goal away. Great, then gives a goal away. You never see Ben Davies bad, then give a goal away. You know what I mean? It's great, goal away, and you're saying, that's just what this laddie does. But I also feel like Tavernier's positioning is dreadful here as well. He's getting sucked in too much to the inside. I know he's getting moved more central, and we can see that. We've talked about it on the channel. He is becoming more of maybe a holding midfielder when we are attacking. You very rarely see him running the flank and whipping balls in. That's not his job. He's getting moved, and he's beginning that transition at the midfield. We spoke about it a lot, though. You're probably bored of hearing it, but he needs to just take 10 steps. 10 steps to the right, and that goal is now happening. Gets sucked in. It's dreadful, but aye. Ben Davies, have to hold the hand up. Ben Davies has had a howler here, right? And some people are saying, what's he even trying to do? Well, it's obvious what he's trying to do, right? He's trying to show a bit of composure and a bit of uh, be brave, bring the ball down and try to get us gone, right? That is fine. You can be brave. You can make mistakes and arrange your shot because that's what we scream. We want shots. We want people trying skills. We want this. Mistakes are going to happen, but the key difference is when you make a mistake, when you make a howler, you've then got to just accept the yellow card and go through them. Just leave them on the deck, collect your yellow card, say apologies to the team. You can't watch your mistake unfold and here go. We are far, far too nice and we need mere dirty attitudes in the team. Did you see how many times Sterling just nailed people in that second half? Did you see how many times Lundstrom did it? We need that in a centre half. We really need that nasty centre half. And I'm not saying go out and injure players or anything, but Accept your yellow there, nail them right there, stop it there, and that's the difference when you're going to be a successful player and why you'll be a player that's continually split in the fan base because all he needs to do is nail him, pick up a yellow, and that goal doesn't happen. But he's been too nice instead of gone through his man. And aye, great finish, but for your Rangers then, it's almost laughable. And that really takes us into halftime. The only thing to really all talk about was the fact that we played the ball down the right-hand side. Great run. 50-50 won by Ross McCausland, by the way. Tries to play in CMA. It's a little bit heavy and CMA's shot ends up just curling wide where I feel like maybe Dessers and Lammer should be making that back post run, but I'll leave it as it was flagged for offside and I'm pretty sure it was offside. Anyway, so we go into halftime and again, my big thinking was going back to the Cantwell incident during um, uh, the Lima game where I fought again, Clement Hand 
handled it wrong by not giving him the opportunity to bounce back. You can argue, wasn't it, day what the manager says, but then look at that game right there with young Ross. That needed to be identified and that needed to be tweaked. And, uh, tre uh, tweak, sorry. and again, I'm no digging him out. I'm no saying anything negative about him. It's a learning experience for the lad. He needs to add that to his game because you saw down the other side, Seymour was helping Barisic out constantly and that forced Betis to go down the other side because it was completely one way and as bad as Tavernier maybe was defensively until the second half, he was outnumbered and overloaded constantly, he had two man to watch so I think we can be a wee bit nicer in terms of that and it just needed to be tweaked and changed and I thought Clement got it absolutely perfect. I was tweeting, I was praying for Sterling to come on and what he done is he took Jose off which was a surprise but it makes sense. Jose for me played his best game in a Rangers shirt by the way. I seen someone tweet just before full time saying hope that's the last we ever see a Jose. Might be wrong. I might be thinking back with Rose Tinted Glassy but can somebody let me know was Jose good today? Because I think he was actually really good. Not only did he get an assist but positive, direct, took men on, put a couple dangerous balls in the box that Lammers could have done better with, you know the chance I'm talking about, but second half, Sterling comes on and what it does is it shores up the right hand side, it's constantly done a job that Ryan Jack does in the Rangers team, plays right centre mid, but helps out in the right hand side, so you had Ross trying to bounce back, trying to take the instructions that he got at half time, you had Sterling here and you had Tav, and that for the best part nullified the biggest weapon for better. So I shout it to Ross, shout it to Sterling, shout it to Dav, and shout it to the manager for seeing it and tweaking it in game. And that's why we got the man. He's no setting his own ways. He's no setting his information. He will try to change and adjust during the game. It's what we talked about when we looked at his managerial profile, and he's shown it already in his managerial career for Rangers. Where I have talked positive, it does need to be said that we were very close to falling away behind just two minutes in to the second half as a corner. We don't do well enough. It ends up hitting the bar, getting it cleared for there. There is then a free kick opportunity for us. And for me, I don't know if you agree or no, but is there a bigger lie in football than Barisic being a threat from free kicks? I liked his performance today. I thought he was stuck in. It was the Barisic that I remember cheering on and being happy with defensively. He got stuck in and he seemed up for it and brave on the ball. But the free kick, man, it's just no conviction, no power. He didn't believe in that. And it needs to be identified because so many times we get ourselves in a dangerous area. Lammers just took it doing the edge of the box. Can he stay on his feet? There is Sadiq versus Aberdeen. You can say what you want, but it's a dangerous free kick. We need to do better. But it's wasted. When speaking of wasted, maybe it was fate. Maybe it was balance, as Thanos once spoke about, because they whipped in a free kick after Perez died, by the way, which I wasn't really impressed with. But they get a free kick, they whip it in, and Rocker has to score. The ball drops to him after a wee bit of a flick on, but Jack Butlin, sensational ball with his feet. The ball then hits, uh, comes up in the air and hits Davies in the arm, but you've actually got European referees knowing the actual jobs, and that's great to actually see, as there's nothing the lad they can do. What's he supposed to do? Eat it off when the ball's on its way, or shove it up. His Jack say, Nana, he can't move it, so clearly it wasn't a given, and handball was nearly the incident as you had a goal to in hand. Can your centre back stop letting the ball hit their hand? Because the, the VAR checks are killing me, Rangers. You're killing me. But we carry on for there as handball was the incident as again as it looked like Real Betis that took the lead in the game as the ball came in from a corner, flicked onto the back post. It's a, a scores at Perez. I can't really remember the exact one. I did nearly cry and had my face buried in to the couch at the time, but I'm pretty sure. It was Perez, it hit his arm, went in, and after a lengthy dis delay, sorry, it was clearly ruled out. And you're thinking, all right, they've hit the bar twice. They put two of the best crosses I've ever seen that's got a simple tap ins and messed up. They forced Jack Butler and he did two fantastic saves, one of them with his feet stopping a clear goal scoring opportunity. I just fancy this. Can we maybe take a gamble? We maybe take a risk and bring on some firepower. That's what a tweet you do. And Big Phil went ahead and brought what we all needed. Some spark and firepower. Desert had ran his race. On comes Kamal Roof and on comes the legs of Rabi Matundo. And I just thought with Roof on the park... When you get them on there, you've got an opportunity. And I did start to perk up a little bit because at that time, we were doing a lot of defending. There was a lot of hard yards getting done. But we never had a bite as Dessers had ran his race. Again, the fitness issues we can talk about another time. But with Roof, you know, if a ball's fallen somewhere, if it's gone to the back post, if it's gone here, you'll put it in. And for me, it showed why 
he is the most infuriating player at Rangers for a very long time because you get him on the part, you just get the best striker we've had in a very, very long time, barring Jimmy Defoe, of course. And it gets his goal, and I absolutely love to see it, by the way. It's a corner, it's flicked on by Ben Davies, I believe. It goes to Connor Goals, and I'm thinking, hit it, Connor! He ends up passing it back in. Rabi Matundo should score here, but I'm pretty sure I'll give him a bit of slack. His sliding effort was deflected by the centre-half, but it falls to Kamar Roof, who's shown the only instincts that's in that Rangers dressing room in terms of attacking. And he sniffs it out and goes ahead and slaps it into the back of it with not the prettiest goal. It's a two-yard finish, but I couldn't care less. That's a striker's goal. Striker's instinct. Something that's no in this team at all. He puts it in the back of it and scores yet another famous goal for his football club as we obviously went on to be the actual winner. But it was big. I thought Ben Davies bounced back with a couple big challenges. I thought John Lundstrom. I, I'm sorry that it's took this long to mention John Lundstrom, but if you are still watching today's video, can you rate Lundstrom's performance? out of 10 for me because I think the blade the grass that man ran in the amount of challenges he put on the discipline that man showed while being on a yellow card and in just yellow card by the way for winning the ball cleanly the fact that he was still able to time his challenges and demand more and inspire us for the middle of the part I know people are turned turned away for Lundstrom and they're never going to get back on the Lundstrom train but I look at every game since Phil's came in giving the midfield keys to Lundstrom he's no ass to play as a centre half or a drop in deep playing he's been the midfield general and for me he's driving this Rangers car we didn't win this game as good as the goals were for the Seamers and everything like the Dessers and of course Roof for me the most outstanding man on that park man of the match was clearly John Lundstrom. And Real Betis huffed and they puffed and they tried their best to get an equaliser. But again, we nearly caused our own problems as several times deep into injury time, we decided to have crazy moments with the ball. One of them, Rabi Matundo, showing his inexperience and that needs to be addressed. I know we're all excited, we're all happy, but can somebody speak to Rabi Matundo in the training centre tomorrow, please, and just say, next time it's the 93rd minute, son, and we've got an overload, run to the corner and get the game over and done it. Then he hit it for 35 yards out as what nearly happened was the ultimate dagger that could have ended Rabi Matundo's Rangers career. It could have been that bad as he tries a shot. Why? I don't know, but from that shot, they throw it up, they put it out wide, they cross it, there's a header on it, and it looks like it's gone in, but Jack Butland gets a goal line clearance with his beautiful, handsome Jack Butland paw, and we get a sigh of relief. Rabbi Matundo, your, your European, uh, uh, European wage appearance fee to your boy Jack Butland as he saves not only this game, but your probable Rangers career, as that was simply unforgivable. But Seema ended up making a wee bit of mistake as well. Lammers made a mistake. We had opportunities to hold on to the ball, but they were just too rash. But to be fair, both of them had gave everything they wanted. And I know Lammers wasn't great on the ball, and he gave it away a couple of times. But this isn't the day to be negative. We can look at that when we do the previews for Aberdeen on the Saturday, right? We can have a wee look at that another time. Let's enjoy what we got for the Rangers team. And that was a Rangers team doing to the absolute bears the bones playing a side that hasn't lost a game at home all season long that just entertained the Galacticos by the name of Real Madrid refused to be beaten in the last 12 games fell to the bare bones all the beaut Clemence Rangers side and that's all I've got to say I can't wait to see this video get us up sorry if I've missed wee incidents or moments but Sterling Tavernier was great in the second half as well great discipline so many big challenges so many big moments I thought everybody bounced back even Ben Davies after his massive mistake let's build these boys up let's get behind them now and take them in to the weekend we can point fingers another day this is the day for celebration so let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below who stood out to you who was your man in the match and what's your thoughts after that fantastic Fantastic European game where again, top of the group, top dogs, three million pounds bank and a buy activated in terms of the next round of the Europa League. There will be no Champions League sides there at all. There's no an extra midweek game now nah, because what we've earned for this, we get a week after and we go right through to the next round. So I can't wait to wait, see what you've got to say. The next time I see you will be Saturday. Until then, I've been Tejan Over92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye bye.